from your heart. Tell him, God, you're my heart. Jesus, come on. Kama wewe baba Hakuna Mungu kama wewe baba wa uweza Come on, wait, wait.
want you to do like this. Look at me. Do like this. On your left. On your left side. Do like this. Now you've drawn a wall. Your neighbor can't see you. Take one more step like this. Then do like this. Even the one behind can't see you. On the, on the side. Now turn behind. Put a wall. After that, put one also in front. Now, imagine you are alone in your room. Now, start dancing for Jesus like you are alone. See whatever. Uh, some of you are. Uh, come on. See whatever. I'm not seeing you dance. Come on. Be as if you are alone in your room. Some of you have not closed it. Come on. Dance for Jesus. Hey. Dance for Jesus. can't dance. Fanero. What is that? That is not dancing. There is a dance that can't remove clothes. The Bible says David danced. <laughs> Some of you are too you're too diplomatic.
somebody to come and show some people what to do. When I take off, come, when I take off, you volunteer, you show, you go. When I take off, I assure us, one, two, three, let's go. Raconda Lessa. I can't do exactly what he's doing. This is what I was waiting for. All right, so Story. They should check him. He's using some things. I have reservations from today. And you have survived, Pastor Zach. You were going to die. He has spared, I've spared him because it, you are already sweaty. For him, he dances in physical exercise form. Goes down, does push-ups. <laughs> By the time he's done, your muscles are paining. Avangalwana. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> <laughs> I hope you didn't hear what I was saying. I was talking to myself. <laughs> Pastor Tony, we are happy men. So don't mind us. We do it in the presence of God. When we are outside, we are very... We don't joke. <laughs> but when we are in the house of God... We dance for him. Hallelujah. Because I figured if you don't dance for God, who will you dance for? You dance on wedding days and parties. Hallelujah. So, welcome to our third day. I honor the presence of the man of God, Pastor Zach. 
<laughs> He's still sweating. Nabagambi. I was worried of the table. Mama Modesta. Pastor uh, Emma. <laughs> Pastor Brian. Have you ever seen him dancing? Hmm? Hmm? Ah, I know. <laughs> We're in a conference. <laughs> you want this whole place to get wet. <laughs> Seconds just just six like this. Pastor Ram is in the house. Pastor Joshua is in the house. And I want us to give a mighty hand clap to the set minor of the house, Pastor Tony K. Ochara. Hallelujah. And his beautiful wife. Praise God. I believe that there are men and women of God down here. I might not know your names. Name of Tagao Nyawano. So I believe God. There's an anointing here. Hallelujah. The Wukenyas are here. Those are the elders of Fanero Ministries. They're about to quote him, Pisa. We told him, Bangabam, Peter, we're about to go. But we want to hear him be apostle. Hallelujah. So we're very honored to be here. This is the third day. God has done us great every day. Yes, Adam told the last person left at about what 10? 10 p.m. Some people were still being carried back. Some woke up in the morning. Hallelujah. God is wonderful. Tell your neighbor God is wonderful. Tell your neighbor God is wonderful. Today I wanted to share something, a very familiar scripture, but it's going a certain direction in a few minutes. <clears throat> uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verses 23. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 23. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 23. Common scripture. Uh huh. One, two, three, let's go. Keep thy heart with all diligence. For are the issues of life. Read it again. Mm. The issues of life. Read it one more time. Mm. Out of it are the issues of life. Out of it are the issues of life. Hallelujah. Out of your heart are the issues of life. That's why you guard it. Because the Bible says out of it are the issues of life. Hallelujah, somebody. <clears throat> Hallelujah. It is one thing to seek God out of something and it's another when you seek God out of nothing. Are you hearing me? When a man seeks God and he has money, hey, that's something. He's saying, you're going to pray but you're going to pray with a car. You understand? So the rain can't hit you. You're seeking God with something a man can seek god and he's healthy that's something a man can seek god and he's happy and perhaps all things have worked so well in their lives and uh, faith smiled on them very early and they were very fortunate in this life it's very different when a man seeks god out of something it's another when a man seeks god out of Nothing. Hallelujah. There are things sometimes that define us even in the presence of God. We go to the presence of God, but the guy who has gone to the presence of God has a meal to eat, he has a house to sleep, and he has children to take to school, and he has the money to take them to school. And there's another man seeking God with nothing. Do you understand? And that man's praise, who has nothing, will change when he gets a house, when he gets a car, when he gets a job, when he gets a breakthrough. The aspirations of men towards the things of God are very simple. In fact, the Lord has not moved as he ought because men are easily satisfied. Because the things that satisfy us, sadly, are the things that the devil has for so long deceived the church into trying to aspire for because 
he has successfully convinced them that they don't have those things. The freedom of the spirit is a place where God places you to the lines of possibilities and the grace to access these things in him seems apparent. And I've realized that if you never satisfied in the things of this world because of where you're positioned in God, you will never really hunger for what you ought to hunger for. I don't know whether I'm making sense. I'll give you an example. There's a man right now seeking God because they want a plot of land in a nice building. And when they get that plot of land and the building, they're going to say, I saw the Lord. There's a man right now who probably has a family issue <clears throat> and <clears throat> he's believing God for something. And God is going to answer that family need and he's going to say that we saw God. Hallelujah. Sometimes the devil can keep us perambulated around the basics of this life and they become success and testimony. And then in the long haul at the end of our lives where the Bible says our hearts are judged against the gospel, you realize that God is not going to judge us because of what we did. Because he dealt with sin once and for all in the cross. The Bible says very clearly that he was the ultimate sacrifice in Hebrews once and for all. The Bible says that he judges the world of sin because they believed not on him. But to them that believe him, the Bible says, there is no condemnation. Why? Because they carry a righteousness imputed. That righteousness has the ability to perfect that man. If that man is weak, that righteousness can work in him and make him a better man every day. And he walks out of any weakness. Because the word of God imputed on us through his righteousness has enough ability to perfect that which concerns us. Somebody say, Amen. amen. Say it again, say amen. amen. The righteousness imputed on us in its own, if a man said, for example, like some say in Romans 3, that some say that we affirm that let us do evil so good should come, whose damnation is just. If a man can assume that the grace that a man preaches is a license to sin, then either that man has not understood that it cannot be a license, or he has not really heard the message. Because the issue of righteousness and grace are issues of a nature. We are born of an incorruptible seed. We cannot sin. We just don't wake up and love it. No man born of God can love sin. Somebody say amen. amen. But how we deal with the sin principle is different, man of God. Many people think sin is what a man does. Sin is not what you do. Sin is who you are. Because the Bible says they even, they even them that sinned not after the similitude of Adam. Right? You're born a sinner. <laughs> I don't know if I'm making sense. Even if you have the best character in the world, you're still a sinner. So, I, I love to ask my fellow believers that if a man is a sinner, regardless of what he does, if he's not a believer, why is it that when a man becomes born again, he cannot be a saint? Regardless of what happens in his life. Why? Because you ascribe more power to the work of sin than the work of the cross. To you, God is weaker than sin. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's why he says very clearly that the righteousness that is imputed to us, the Bible says, has been revealed the righteousness which is of God without the law. The righteousness, the Bible says, which is even of faith in Christ. You are righteous because you believed, Amen. not because you did anything. Amen. That faith perfects you every day and makes you a better man. That is the grace of God. He keeps you as you walk through. 
and to the end you become a perfect man. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. But while you're still in the journey, that grace is still available to sustain you. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the blood of Jesus is stronger than any sin. Hallelujah. That cross dealt with everything that can ever destroy you. And that is why I love to preach the redeeming love of Christ. Because I know how powerful it is. One man of God warned me and told me, Grace, if you preach the grace, I will make you great. But be ready. He was telling me the Lord had given him a message. He told me, the Lord told him to tell me. And he spoke and God spoke through him. I can confirm it. That he did. You know I can hear. No, that oh, no, no. <laughs> but he told me I will use you. Yes. But if you want to preach my love. You will be persecuted. Any man who says I'm going to preach what God has done on the cross. Will be persecuted. Any man who wants to give glory to what the devil does to men will never be persecuted. Are you hearing me? There is no grace and glory without persecution. Because that is the point where you start to see God. Oh, you can see God. Hallelujah. Paul says we walk daily dead. <laughs> In dying often. Dead as yet we live. You understand? Kati mwabaloza nti mukama agenda kukozeso sigare nga bakusiga biziga I'm sorry you're not going to see God Hallelujah we just don't know where we come from as a people That's why we read church history to know where we come from because the church is repeating the same mistakes The man asked the man of God when he was arrested by the council he asked them you stiff-necked people which of the prophets did you not persecute? Do you know why the Bible speaks of stiff nakedness? The place where a man refuses to turn his head to see. Because he's fixated on one direction of what he thinks to know is true. And the church in Uganda and Africa has started to repeat the same mistake Jerusalem did. And the church in Jerusalem died. And the churches in Uganda are dying. The other day I had a man of God saying, you say what people don't want to hear, they will leave you. That is not the truth. He said, if you raise me up, I will draw men to myself. Some people think it is sin to have a big number of people. And they think it is righteous to only harvest 20. That is not your portion in Jesus. Somebody said, that is not me. In the name of Jesus Christ. He called us to, 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 to occupy this world. He told us to multiply through the gospel. Hallelujah. When you read the creation story and they tell you produce, go produce and multiply, subdue the earth. Some people think of making babies. Even Muslims do that. The responsibility of the church is bigger than that. Muslims produce them, we get them saved. Hallelujah. That is called producing. So he says, so you know, have 10,000 instructors in the Lord, but a few fathers. But because he says, for lo, I have begotten thee through the gospel. We're talking about another kind of begetting. Not physical, but spiritual. Somebody say amen. amen. In 1926, Edward Joe Church came with his group and he camped in Uganda. A few months before, a man called George Pilkington had come. And that is why we owe something to Britain. And the Lord has been speaking to me about it. That the first man who brought the gospel was a British guy. We owe something to that nation. Somebody say amen. amen. And so Pilkington comes and he, they tell you most of his part of ministry was actually prayer. He was overwhelmed by the spirit that was at work in the church that he found in Uganda. There was a picture of what men called church, but it was loathing. Like Paul tells you, he went to a city and the Bible says that the scene of that city vexed a man's soul. You can get to a point and the mandate on your life starts to make you feel like you're dying because you are a minister people who will never understand how serious it is to say you're a believer in Christ. There's a wonderful woman called Mabel Ensel. She was an Irish lady. She was one of the first women after the going of George Pilkington 
to preach the true gospel in Uganda. I wish some of you go and read what Mabel Enso taught. You'd realize that what she taught is what she shared with Edward Joe Church. And that combination between him and Sibambi Simeon praying at Namirembe Hill. The revival sparked in this nation. The revival, the first revival that sparked in this nation was a revival of grace. It was a revival of grace. I can give you an example. One time late at about 1946 or 1947, Edward Joe Church goes out of the country to Europe to go and preach the gospel. And then he leaves the brethren behind. During that time, there was a man who crept in unawares and brought in a certain doctrine uh, into the brethren. And he stumbled on William Nagenda during that time, and William was with Yosia Tinuka. And the two of them were in council. No, they were in a group of a meeting of a man who... Who, 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 who had brought a certain doctrine. And the doctrine was called crucifying the old man. The man introduced a certain doctrine in the church during that time at the absence of Edward Joe Church. And you see Chinooka and, uh, and, uh, and William Nagenda fell for that thing. And then they went on Renzori Mountains. This is on record to pray. And crucify the old flesh. And they spent many days and nights. It rained on them. And they blistering heat and smoldering coals and everything to, to, to crucify the what? The old man. So after many days they returned back to Kampala. And they had not seen any victory in that. Because I've realized when you try to attempt to crucify what Christ already crucified. <laughs> you make yourself a transgressor. Because the Bible says, if I build the very things that I've destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Now, the story is told that uh, one of those days, William goes and visits Simeon Sibambi. And then he tells him, Simeon asks him, how come you look withered? The guy said, man, I've been working on crucifying this old man. Then he explains to him the doctrine. And then the story says, Simeon laughed. And after laughing, he told him, <laughs> this was a statement written in the story. He told him, brother, your old man was crucified with Christ many years ago. Go home and rest. <laughs> ah, and the story says, the light bulb went off on William Nagenda. And then he went and told his friend, you see, and told him, man, we have knocked a wall. But during that time, there was a group of people they had also taught about crucifying this old man. And the story is told later, a certain letter. Uh, Sibambi writes a certain letter to the church. And the church was entitled, How Men Don't Understand What the Grace of God Has Done to the Church. And he continues to explain. Read the first great awakening. Ed, uh, the, 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 the Wesleyan brothers, John and, 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 and Charles. Since 1939 to 1941, they were fighting George Whitfield, Jonathan Edwards, and another group of guys. Why? Because the other guys were preaching the grace message and these guys were legal. In 1939, they contended. 1940, they contended. In 1941, they made peace. And that was the beginning of the first Great Awakening. Read the second Great Awakening. The baton started it. It was wonderful. It went legal and died. Jo Charles Grandison Finney met grace. And the second Great Awakening was reawakened. Go back to the Moravian Revival way before the first Great Awakening. Peter Buller. Peter Buller was among the people who was trying to correct the Wesleyans in the time when the law had hit the church. First, if, if Moravian had it and revival hit, if First Great Awakening had it and revival hit, if Second Great Awakening had it and revival hit, go and read about the holiness movement. It was a grace message. It wasn't a legal message. Because they were speaking of holiness as a fruit, not as a seed. Not the working of the man, but of the actions of God working in the man to produce true holiness and righteousness. That when righteousness and holiness reign in you, it's not according to your works, but the working of God in you. Holiness movement was burst. Go read the charismatic movement. Go read the word for faith movement. Read the Holy Ghost movement of 1992. Come to Uganda and look at a man who has not even tested revival, fighting what he doesn't understand. He doesn't even know what it means to see God. You know why I'm saying these things? I'm saying them because if the body of Christ does not understand what God is pouring on our nation, 
we are going to lose many people. If we don't understand what God has mandated us as a body of Christ, there is no way and where the Bible is very clear that there is no other name by which men are saved. It is the name of Jesus Christ. The representation of him is grace and truth. In every revival there will be extremes. Some people will abuse the grace. Some people will misuse it. But we shouldn't throw it out because it is abused. We can correct them and still preach it. Because the church in Uganda has started to die. Pentecostals now have become more legal than even the other counterparts. There is nothing that defines the Pentecostal movement anymore in our nation. Apart from politics, diplomacy, pretense, double-facedness. We That's what is in the church today. A pastor talks to you. The other day I was talking with Pastor Tony. He came to Mukono, to Seta, to bring Jesus. And a fellow minister stood somewhere and said, Do you understand what I'm saying? The Bible is very clear. You've been 30 years in the gospel. And you don't know that the Bible says that the first and second admonishing regard a man a heretic. You've never admonished the man. You're judging him. How can you be right, wrong on principle, and be right in action? How can you be led by the Holy Spirit and be wrong on principle? The Bible says, does our Lord judge a man it has not heard? How can you judge a man you have not heard? How? But it's happening in our nation. A few minutes ago, I was talking to somebody. We spent four months trying to apply to the prisons to allow us to go and reach out to prisoners who are on parole and death sentence, whose families are abandoned. And a fellow Christian sat on our papers for more than four months because we are Fanero members. There is a man whose life is online. They are going to be put on the gallows in a few days. And somebody refuses you to reach them with the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because you're a Fanero member. And those men die in prisons. And they gave non-believers one year and they gave us a few months. Ah, we want to first test you to see. These are fellow Christians refusing us to go to men in prison who we are taking our money and food and every weekend we are there. We go to prison every weekend. Because we need to preach Jesus to people. Today the church is what fights the church. Muslims don't fight us. Which doctors don't fight us? The devil left us long ago. Because he knows. We can fight enough. I mean he just positions us. And then we beat ourselves until we all bleed to death. Do you understand what I'm saying? Are you seeing where I'm coming from? Now as a nation, we are like a nation without a soul, spiritually. We are a fatherless nation, a nation which is fatherless. We don't even have fathers. We don't have men who can come to us and tell you, I believe in you. Do you know how many people are waiting for Apostle Grace to fall? Pastor Tony, do you know how many people are watching? They are not praying for your strength, no. Every morning they are saying, God... If he can only, the moment anything, the other day somebody wrote that I prophesied wrongly. And it went viral. So the newspaper which wrote it said sorry. The people who received it didn't take the news back. Do you understand? When they discovered they were wrong, they all kept quiet. There's somebody right now who is waiting for you to fall. Now that I exposed singa mukama amonsu lira ne mulaba kenchanga amwaziza bwati wansi so that when he falls they say ah te twa bagamba God will keep you <laughs> God will keep us I said God will keep us He will keep us he will keep us. Today, even a pastor fears to speak to a fellow pastor. Because we are now, we are now, we are now, we are now, we are 
That's what pastors are doing to themselves. One time, and I have an apostolic tongue that is very dangerous. One time I went in a certain country, and there was this man who had a huge meeting. And then he sat with us over dinner. Huge. He was, had one of the biggest meetings, a Ugandan, one of the biggest meetings in that country. Thousands of people. This guy was spending millions. He was the darling of the darling, the cream of the la cream, the depth of depth, the height of height. And we sat over dinner. For two hours, he was talking about fellow men of God. Two hours, Musumba, two. Two hours. He was talking about fellow men of God. Oh, you're going to know what he died in a Hey, what does that person have? For two hours. And then I went on the flight. I was seated with another man of God. And I told him, God has told me in two years that man's ministry will be no more. It will be no more. Man of God. It is a very frustrating experience when your brook dries early. Now you still have strength, like Moses spoke. He says that I still have strength to go in like I had that day, but Lord, the Lord won't let me in. You still have the ability to walk in the promised land and fulfill all the things God has spoken in your life, but a sudden hedge has been put between you and that thing to access. You're still strong and energetic to pray. You're still strong, reju rejuvenated, reinvigorated, whatever, re re whatever. But you've been cut off to access certain things because you walked out of a certain little principle as a minister of the gospel. This guy used to stand and he said, we are not like those pastors of, he used to mention a very poor slum. Don't bring money like those pastors of, don't, we are, you, this is another ministry. The Lord broke his backbone and took him to the very slums he used to abuse. And the men he abused, God lifted them. His ministry wasn't. He even left the slums and went to a village. And we saw it with our very own eyes. As a man of God, I went back and I said, Mokama, to Yambi. It's a bad thing when your brook dries early. Tell your neighbor, it's a bad thing. When your brook dries early. Today in the body of Christ, we don't have direction, man of God. And I'm speaking, you understand what I'm saying? You talk about fathering in our nation. Who is a father? You think fathering is having many years without the responsibility that comes with that. How many young men are prodigal? Because their fathers could not release them without destroying them. They had to destroy them. Hope the young man is difficult. He's still your son. You're his father. You can fix it if you are a father. It's called grace. Amen. But today we are prodigal. Many are young men of our prodigal. Why? Because they have been bruised and wounded. This is not fathering if a man can compete with his own son. You physical parents, you don't compete with your child. You always wish that your child is better. But it's not what is happening in the body of Christ. Today when you become a success, the senior pastor has a problem with you. Why? Because you preach deeper. And we are building the kingdom of God. And that man goes to the face of God and says, use me. We need a move in our nation. God, we are available to be revived. Sons don't cover their fathers. Fathers don't cover their sons. When he's drunk, you laugh at him and uncover him. When your son screws up, you also uncover him. Why? Because the spirit of this world has engulfed the body of Christ and church today. What is fathering? Look at our nation. What is fathering? What is fathering? What is fathering? When you go to fathering, the irony Today it's manipulation and advantage and taking advantage. What if I can use you, I use you. If you can help me get this, I'll do it. I, 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 I use you because you can help me get this. What is what is in the body of Christ today? That is why we don't bless ourselves. Do you understand? Pastor Tony can't speak to me and bless me even if I'm an associate pastor. Because I did not come in this ministry to submit and serve as a son heading for an inheritance. I came as an associate 
because I want to survive around the grace around him to operate enough to feed and survive on. That's a Laban spirit. He knows he doesn't have the hand to grace. But then he feeds another guy and then he uses him to eat all of that. And then he takes the glory. And when the young man comes and tells him, I want my inheritance, he tells him, okay, now I'm ready to pay you. Why didn't he pay him before? The mantles that fall on men are not even taught. They are just cast. Why? Because the man knew that he was the only prophet in the world. And God tells him there are 7,000 more. He is coming to the young man. He's already disturbed that there is another guy who has it. He just hits him like this. And then he walks away. I want to go back to my father and say goodbye. He knows it's wrong, but he can't even correct him. He tells him, you go. Why? Because I have a problem. Because you're another one among the 7,000. Me, I thought as the only one remaining. I thought as the only one remaining. So you have to even be denied in the place when you ought to be blessed. The instructor is supposed to tell you, I'm going to go through here and here and here, but walk with me, you'll receive it. No, I want a double portion. Stay here. <laughs> but, but I've served you all this long. Yes, stay here. Why? Because even when I'm going, I don't want my glory to be shared. And what does that son know to do? He raises a Gehazi, raises another chap, and then the next thing you know, it's all a dead ministry. The anointing falls into a man, and then he dies with it in the tomb. And the man who comes in the tomb doesn't know even what it means. He falls on dead bones. They receive life, but those bones are for a nation. He is the chariot and the horseman of Israel that he has fallen on. But he gets up and goes back home with a life, lives with his children and dies with a very anointing and somehow it's frustrated in there. Why? Because he received what he didn't understand. Today we even do impartations. We don't even know what impartations are. That you might be realigned to a particular course of your destiny that I might impart into you some spiritual thing that in the end you might be established. For us, we had to read books of dead men to receive the anointing. Because not many could teach us. You had to get a book of Kenneth E. Hagen, read it. He died in 2000 and something. Go to E.W. Kenyon in the 19th. Why? Because that E.W. Kenyon who doesn't know you, he will not fight the anointing upon your life. You receive impartation out of pages because physical men, the moment you receive it, he has a problem. What is wrong with a church? What is wrong with the body of Christ? There is a certain disease. It's in the body of Christ. I don't understand what it is, but it is there. How come we are killing ourselves without men outside intervening in our We are ki pastors. We are killing ourselves. Right now, some of you have issues between each other. You talked about so and so, even the other one talked about so and so. You talked about the senior pastor. You, you see, you, 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 you understand it? Our mouths are filled with unrighteousness. We don't move in the purity of love. One time Edward George Church went with William Nagenda. And then they went somewhere in the nation. And then the power came up on them. And when the power came up on them, each one of them, they, they, they became proud to each other and then they went apart in different ways. And God moved in one meeting and God didn't move in the other. I won't tell you who. And then later on, this other brother comes to him and tells him, Brother, I am so sorry that I became so proud because of the power that I carry. That is the fiber that burst the East African revival. Men could tell each other sorry. Men could tell each other Sorry. Another story is given of William Nagenda. He was a very articulate guy. He was a good speaker. And then he also traveled with another minister. And then this other brother minister started to have a problem with the guy because he was always winning the pulpits. Because he was a good preacher. And then this brother started to have jealousness and envy. And then everything Nagenda was preaching was wrong. According to this man, after the service, he goes behind and starts crucifying and unsewing and sewing the man's summons. And the Lord dealt with him in that room. And he went to William and told him, brother, I am sorry. I have been very envious of you because you are a better preacher. Forgive me. And they reconciled. That is the foundation that built the East African revival. We don't even have genuine love between saints. 
We laugh every day and then behind our backs we are smiling with each other. Then behind our backs we are stabbing each other. Oh, I spoke to him. This is what he said. Can you believe he told me this? Why? Because he's not even speaking with you because it's a mutual conversation. He's speaking with you to get a certain conversation that he will carry to go back and then destroy you. And then we are in the middle of all that telling God, move in our land. Move in our land. We started overnight in Mokono years ago here. And a, a group of pastors joined with witch doctors to report us to the district that were praying too loud. That thank God you came. Thank God you came. Thank God for you. We don't even have unity. Lumu, one time we made a breakfast for pastors. We called like 20 or 30 of them. We sat over tea. Sir, we have called you because we want to have a unity of the faith. Someone said, national fellowship. Then another one sat down. After eating, he said, Echikuru Musumba, Mulina Malala. Mubere ye wamwe, ne mutule yo. Then I asked the brother, I reached out to you. You didn't reach out to me. What is Malala? <laughs> then he told them, If there is anything that you need us to do as brethren, we want to say that we are available to help. Yes, you can help me. But you have not availed your help. I am saying me, I am available to help. But you, you have not availed your help. Until one pastor stood up and told him, look you guys, this is why the church is not growing. What was there, Marega? These men have spent millions to take us on breakfast, to make peace with us and unity. And we are all looking at this negativity here. And the spirit that is supposed to bind us is actually destroying us and separating us the more. Now, I don't even want to go there. If I go up there, in our nation, that's even worse. It's even worse. A man sees an error with one group of guys who had written to the president because they wanted the status. Then they put religion. Then he says, we are not religious. He also says, he says, we are not religious, we are faith. Okay, if you have faith, then tomorrow we find you in the interreligious council. Do you understand? Is it in the spirit of bringing unity of the body of Christ? Or it's in the spirit? I don't even want to judge that. But do you understand how serious this is? Do you think people, do you think there is really omusumba na agwakati? Waluo echintwe solo muyamba mufe. Do we even have a small network that can help this man who lasted? We don't have it. We don't even have a simple apostolic prophetic teaching pastoral network that can say, brother, you're fallen, but we are with you. Get the guy out of the system. The Roman Catholic does it every day. Those priests abuse sexually little boys and they still are restored and they preach. But our fellow Christians, we right now, Waluwa ya galo, ilaka tuwa luna antunu ilaka tiafunye choko ugerencha. Do you understand what I'm saying? Something has to change in our land. Somebody says something has to change in our land. That is why in the Musumba, Tony, me I told the people, our group, me I told them, let us be the example. When they hate you, love them more. When they abuse you, bless them more. When they disrespect you, believe in them more. Hold your peace. Let them do whatever they will do. Why? Because love in the end always wins. It never fails. It never fails. It never fails. He that does not love does not know God. For God is love. God has exalted love above knowledge. And to know the love that passes all knowledge... You cannot tell me you saw God because you're demonstrating power and you can go behind a man's back and speak evil about him. You never saw God. 
And gifts can be deceptive. We think that gifts are maturity. That is the problem Paul found. He thought that by the gifts he had, he could easily judge spiritual matters. Little Mark has disappointed them. I'm not going with him anymore. You're forgetting. You, you killed. He goes back to Jerusalem. He knows this man is a murderer, but he's speaking on your behalf. He's saying, yes, he's a murderer, but the man is changed. He suffers on your back. That is why at the first separation in Acts 13, he didn't say, separate me, Paul and Barnabas. He said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul. This guy was born again, but he was still Saul. He was still Saul according to the Spirit. And in the consecration, Barnabas always went ahead of Paul. But Paul never knew. Sometimes we think maturity is having numbers. Sometimes we think maturity is having people who are following us around. That is not maturity. There are certain men who are not as with those numbers, but have a very deep level of maturity as demonstrated in the love of God. That's called fathering. We don't have many. Barnabas was a father to Paul. But he looked and appeared like a simple companion. Paul without Barnabas, life would have been very hard for him. Very, very hard for him. Very, very hard for him, Pastor Tony. Because today in the body of Christ, we don't even have fellow saints who can hold another man's hand to tell him to a yambe komuganda wange. One time a fellow man of God, friend of mine, one time he put a, 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 a fundraising meeting to fundraise for buying a building that a Muslim was taking. I attended that meeting. He wrote to all the pastor friends of Kampala, all of them, and five people came. Him, me, his wife, one pastor who was not very popular, and a, another person who is a helper in the ministry. Five people. Five people. They appeared. They appeared. They appeared. Do you understand what I'm saying? We, we, we let us stop deceiving ourselves until God really becomes serious amidst us and then we see God walking through us in love and manifestation of this maturity we are not going to see God let them talk you don't talk let them speak about you you don't speak keep quiet preach the gospel in and out of the season why? Because your approval is unto God as a worker. He's not as unto men. They will walk out, but God will bring more. Why? Because he doesn't run out of people. Come on. He doesn't run out of people. But even the basic principle, basic principle of a pastor or a minister, just a man of God listening to another minister, it is hard. We can't even submit to the Holy Ghost. Musumba, me, I told people, we are missing something in Uganda. Benson in the Hosa, Yalaba Mukama. Benson in the Hosa, he saw God. One man like this. One man. He raised David Oedepo. He raised uh, Adeboyo. He raised Chris Oyakilome. And those are the most successful men on the face of the earth. No ministry in the world compares to their league. They are not in their league. Adebayo is the richest pastor in the world. He's three times richer than the second richest. He has built two cities, Goshen and Canaan. And I'm talking about cities, hospitals, schools, universities, colleges, tertiary institutions, homes of people, pastors, their children, and all these institutions, credit schemes, supermarkets, shopping malls, they are all in one city. We are still believing God for, for a bulb in the church. Uganda, Musumba, Hachakabanai, Mugan, you gula barbu ya chachi, Mugan, you gula barbu. One hundred and fifty million dollars rich. Ah, so it was the center of Ugaga. Ah, ah, see Ugaga, Nayesi Damu, money answers. It answers. I, I spoke to Victor Taiwo, the direct son of David Oyedepo. He told me, before Idahosa died, he told Taiwo, hold tight, David. He shall be successful. Everything Idahosa did, David Oedepo has done. Everything unsurpassed. Everything. He had the biggest church in Africa, 
Oedipo does. He was one of the richest pastors in all. Oedipo does. Everything in the house I received, it was passed on onto David Oedipo. Simple. He served the man. We associates. You understand? That's why we don't have inheritance. The men up there who are dying, they can't even multiply their spirits in other men. Why? Because they despise it and then act to be serving it. Because you know the man, therefore you think because he laughs at you on basketball, he's your level. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I see them up today. But they have not moved one inch. We went into those meetings and received impartations. Because we honored. We honored. We honored. Men are not just made. When you have 5,000 people and they think you just woke up and got 5,000 people, ah, this must be a cult. How can you just wake up in the morning and then you have 5,000 people? God cannot trust you with certain people when your character is not right in the spirit. He can't. He can't. Because he knows those are thousands of people going to be destroyed. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because these numbers are responsibility. If a man fails, all of them fail. And not that the man qualifies himself. No, it's the grace of God. And it's available for every man. But we reject him. Ministers reject God. It's not that he's not speaking. We just reject him. We even refuse to do what must be done, even when we know it's the right thing to do. So how did Idahosa raise that? Look at their sons and see where they are. Look at the, how can a man have a church of seven kilometers? That's what the boy is doing, is building now. From three to seven kilometers by seven kilometers. Kilometer musamu, kilometer musamu. Again, I could take a moment. Children's church, I remember it was a turn. The teacher has to come later, member. No. You find a man, he says he's an apostle. You look at him and he does something and you say, but who is an apostle? Some people think an apostle is a person who builds churches. You can build churches and not be an apostle. An apostolic office is a responsibility. It's a responsibility. It comes with a very serious distinction. One time a certain apostle in Kampala went and they wrote about us and he went and got newspapers, tabloids. And then preaching against us. A tabloid. And then he said he's an apostle. He's not an apostle. Because the apostolic mantle owns the responsibility of the salvation, even of the lost. He says, I wish I was a cast of myself, my brethren, for the sake of my Jews, my fellow Jews. He was a Jew born in Tassa, Cilicia, diaspora. God sent him to the uncircumcised, but his heart was also to the circumcised because they were his people. Already the fact that I'm Ugandan, it should hurt you more. But then he removed the Bible and put a tabloid on his table. And then he says, I'm an apostle of God. God has started getting him out of Kampala, slowly. And he's saying, God is sending him, watch. How can you remove a tabloid? No jiteka katuti no jako Bible. Yatui tuma kolachi. He said, when I was a minister, I sought to know nothing, save Christ dead and resurrected. That's our business. Preach Jesus. Musumba nze na yombe saba sumba ba nafe. Aba, they used to move again and go, oh, musajia akuba simu, oh, musajia, oh, wakubiri, agaba mazi, kaluti. Ne mugamba, that is foolishness. I told a man, you ask God for the real thing and show the truth. Then people tell the difference. But don't fight carnal fights. We have a operation clean the house. All of them were on that radio station. All of them, their homes were cleaned. Why? 
because they fought the wrong battle. God has not called us to say this is the wrong one. No, God has called us to do one simple thing. Preach Jesus Christ, dead and resurrected. He said, if you raise me up, I will draw men to myself. That's our business. While people are out there trying to make themselves busy about what you've put on, for you're busy following the vision. That is important. That is important. That is important. That is important. And you're not obligated to answer. Because I always tell people, there are people who understood me when I said nothing. There are always people who who will understand you without saying anything. They'll always be there. They'll always be there. Pastor Ram came to the ministry and submitted. And a great man of God came and told me, if you talk to Pastor Ram, me and you and our ministries are done. Nemugamba, go. <laughs> Why? Because he thought his ministry was greater than a soul. Pastor Ram, mukama jakui musa. A jakui musa. A ta jakui musa. Nchirabie mba lokole, wee pero mulokole refuses to talk to another man. How? How do you do that? How can it be a reason that because Pastor Tony has a friend, you're not going to talk to Pastor Tony because he's a friend to that person? So cells are dying. Souls are dying. Men of God need unity in the faith. They need to be held and strengthened with each other. Somebody still has that mentality. It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. Genda Mukono. Go to a hall of Mukono and look for a 1,000 seater. Go on Entebbe Road and look for a 1,000 seater. And count how many there are. Go on Bombo Road and look for a 1,000 seater. And the people sit. And count how many there are. How many people in Kampala? Three million people. And we don't see that there's a problem with us as a body of Christ. There's a problem. Falewe kubo ya imi nilanga Queens Waba ntunebadia mituare tano. Ngabaze kuonye zewa. Those days are gone. You have to advertise a whole year to fill a crusade ground, a, a, a stadium now. Twelve months. Something has to happen in our nation. I said something has to happen in our nation. And it will begin with a few men. But we shall do it. You know, Pastor Tony, for us, you know. And some of the pastors here who understand what I'm saying. We must do a difference. But I don't waste time on pastors who waste time in the kingdom. Musumba, I'm sorry. I don't. People are dying every day. We have responsibilities. The other day we were watching a video with a group of friends in the car. Muammar Gaddafi said, it is evident that victory is ours even as Muslims without using guns or diplomacy or politics. Why? Because for every two children born in Europe, eight Muslim children are born. And they say that you need about 1.9 ratio to sustain a culture. Many nations in Europe cannot sustain a culture for the next 25 years. Islam is going to rule even with just producing children. We have an opportunity to preach to the Muslims and we are still fighting each other. There's something wrong with the church. I'm sorry, I had not planned to preach this way. Even me, I don't know. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is wrong. Where are the fathers of our nation? Who are supposed to come up and say this is a problem? Let me tell you, Master. When they attacked us, there is only one man of God I will never forget, Pastor Gerard Muebe. Every time I think about that man, I want to cry. Because he didn't know me, he called me. He told me, Young man, I hear people fighting you. And I told him, Yes. He told me, Come and we meet. He asked me, why are they fighting you? And I explained to him. And he told me, me, I don't know what you're going through. But I want you to know, I am here praying for you. You understand what I'm saying? 
We don't have many of those men in our nation. We don't have many. Because some of them which were even fighting me are th two times older than me. Two times. A man goes on internet, social media, and then writes something. Now, do you think I'm weeping because they did it? No. The Lord has blessed me. And none of those men who has fought us actually is anywhere. But why is that happening in this land? Why is it happening in Uganda? Why, why Uganda? Why not another land? Why in Uganda? A man of God fell in the apostolic network of the United States. Apostolic network. Very great preacher. More than 20,000 people in a church. The man fell. These guys, there were nine of them. They pulled him out of the system. They started going to his church preaching and making it grow. They made the guy disappear for three months. Came back and they were preaching on his pulpit. Making sure that they don't lose even one sheep. After three months, they brought the man, reinstalled him and stood in front of the congregation and told them, we believe in this man. The man's church is still standing. If you fall now, you're done. You're done. But does that mean that the call of God on your life goes? Even David killed Uriah, slept with Bathsheba. He was still a man after God's own heart. Even with that failure. But they don't tell the difference. They don't tell the difference. Because there is something wrong in our body of Christ today. And what is the spirit we have birthed in our congregation? They also the same spirit of this world. They always come with needs. They don't come to serve. They always have needs. God is not priority. He's just a tool to access what they need. He's, he's among the drinks. They can choose Coke to do and do Fanta. They can't even settle in one church. They can't even be faithful to a man of God. One man and say, let me listen and serve this man. They can't. Because in them is a spirit of whoredom. They whore. They're church members, but they whore. They are, you're their pastor because you've not yet rebuked them. You rebuke them, you'll see. They'll go. They can't even say this is where. They can't be satisfied and say, God, speak to me through Pastor Tony. I believe you to speak to me through. They think there's a... And then they say, I'm praying God. I've been praying for many years. I don't see any change in my life. How can you see change when you're not even planted in the house of the Lord? How can you flourish in his courts? You're not planted anywhere. You're not planted anywhere. You're just hawking your wares. You're a good worshiper. You go worshiping in different churches. You're a good preacher. You go preaching because the man who gives you the pulpit is the one who is your father. When they deny you the pulpit, they're no longer your spiritual father. <laughs> and sometimes you need to sit. Because maybe at the time when you're seated, it's when Saul will be tormented and you desire to play the harp. Because even though you are anointed to be king, you don't sit in the office of the king. And there are things that will test and try you to sit there. Many men are fathers, but they are not even qualified to pastor the house of God. They are not qualified, according to the scriptures, to pastor the house of God. Simple, simple things, simple things. A deacon, a man of God, a preacher or bishop should not be hot-headed. And then you find a pastor with a hot head. Hot-tempered. A pastor. A pastor. We are shepherds. Sheep will go. They will be funny. They will even leave themselves of the creep. You don't get it and get the other leg. And also let me break it and show you. that You're going to die. You are going to cut. I know a girl one time, she, she messed up a certain man of God somewhere in Kawempe. The man told her, you're going to walk like a snake in this world and you're going to eat dust. A man of God. And I remember telling the woman, <laughs> and I used to support that ministry. And God told me, never put your money there. I stopped putting my seed there. That was the last time that man ever became a pastor. God, the, the owner of the building, chased him out. Then he went to sit under another ministry. Up to today, he has failed to pastor ever again. This is like eight years ago. He's still in the body of Christ, but inactive. The, the brook dried. God posed him. How can you curse someone? How can you curse your own sheep? What did Jesus come to do? 
And then he says to the pastor, some men of God are not even qualified to preach the gospel. But it's not for us to expose them. God will. It's not our business. May I speak as an apostle? Solo biyo gerani monso nyiwa. Solo biyo gerani monso nyiwa. Because that's my office, right? But something has to change. If we are building the church, let us build the church. If we are Christians, you find a Christian in gossip. Now, can you believe it? You're still, you know, it's like, even me, I have people have preached to three, four years, but they're still in gossip. Five years, I'm going to be stuck. I never began to be in the yogi. Because remember, when you speak on a saint, the Bible says every tongue that raises against you, it shall be condemned. So you've already condemned yourself because you spoke about her. And you're asking God why you're stuck. You spoke about her. Some things cannot go away until you go back and make peace with her and say, we, 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 They do that all the time. Why am I stuck? It seems this ministry is fake. Then they go to another ministry. Ah, it seems this one has failed. Then they go, you will move. Oja, oja kutambuza. Where is this? Mpaka wono ko we dere de yoku gundi ku cross. Ngokadio inimi yaka ankaga. Na nothing has moved in your life. Ogambe na imu kama. Where did I miss it? Very simple things. Because I told people some bloods have bigger consequences when they are touched. Walwe misa imu kama jareka. Ne walwe misa i. We bata Cain when Cain killed Abel. When, when Cain killed Abel, right? God told Cain, you're going to be a vagabond. But a man who kills you, I shall repay seven times. When he got to Lamech, he said 70 times. A young man burnt himself in Tunisia and the whole nation went on war. One man like this, there are certain people you can't touch in this world because it can have consequences that go further than even you. <laughs> Such a secretary no one, the man told him, cast be Canaan. Not all of them who fought their fathers had problems with their children, but he touched the wrong man. Who do you know who you're touching? They are seated there, they are humble, but you don't know what they are going to become tomorrow. God is jealous about some people. He would run mad. He said, I gave up nations, Ethiopia and Sheba for you. There are men God can even sacrifice the whole nation for, for them to be alive. And then you touch that one. She's a single Quiet woman seated there, but God would kill a whole nation for her, and you don't know. Then you open your mouth against her. You don't even know the divine mandate and responsibility he has on her life, and how much protection he has put on her because of what he has to fulfill in her life. And many guys are doing that to each other. Stop it. Stop talking about people. Because some of you, it's the reason why you fail to grow. You failed. And you'll never make peace. Until you go and say, Naim Kamba, Musumba and Sonywa. My fellow sister, I said something ungodly. Today there is no repentance in church. Tell you how. Who? How? Repent with who? No. They are all right. All of them are right. Let me tell you, there are certain people you can never be right with. Because of the covenant they have with God. Moses married a Kushite woman. He was wrong. But when Aaron and Moses raised, Miriam and Aaron raised dust, God told them, no, you are the wrong one. Yes, it's wrong for him to marry Kushite. But I talk to that man differently. You are the wrong one. Okay, it's in the law that we shouldn't marry outside our kindred. Yes, but you're the wrong one. Not Moses. Because I have another relationship with him. I don't speak with him in visions and dreams. That's your level, Miriam. Speak with him in face to face. He beholds my very what? Form. Weren't you afraid? You think some people can just die? You think you can just destroy some people? There are certain people you can't destroy. Even nations, that's how they make it. These people in opposition, they do that. They get as many people killed because they know one day an innocent blood can be killed and that nation flips and God runs mad. 
It's always about that. Well, to get them to take. Hey, hey, hey. But they are looking for one blood. There is one blood they know. Once it is touched, the nation will be overthrown. The government can be overthrown because of that one blood. That's why some people don't care how many people die because they know the principle. Some bloods can't be touched. Tell your neighbor, some bloods can't be touched. They can't be. So, I want to finish. Do you understand what I'm saying? But even the basic ministry ethics in pieces of ways that it was in a basic ministry ethics. This is a man of God. This is how he's treated. Basic ministry ethics. We don't even celebrate each other. When you hear a fellow man of God has done a successful thing, write a letter. Brother, I commend thee by God. And I bless God for the recent success that you had in the conference X. We are standing with you and celebrating with you. Always you should know that as brethren in the house of God and of the same household of faith, we celebrate you, we love you, and pray for you. God take you far. You can never attract what you don't celebrate. You can't. Negati yom sadi akole chikombe mungolema na atambro vudja ne bubu chigine chizimba ano wechit. Atenda chonga chizimbi de kumutume. Ana poso na zimba boati. Boati. Kumango liyomu la lakoze demonstration. Then men compete with each other. One gets off, another one gets on the pulpit. And he wants to show that one can preach. But me, tambala geko. Some people are not can't even weigh themselves against the responsibility of the altar because they don't know what the altar means. They think an altar is exposing what they know. Do you understand what I'm saying? Olina aloza nti asani doku imi nila kukatuti kubanga manyo kusomesa. This pulpit is blood. These are people's lives. Paul says that I'm not accountable of any man's blood for I've revealed the whole counsel of God. This man is even shot in counsel. And he wants to get on the bloods of men and minister. Why? Because I A man of God called me a few days ago. Nanga musumba mpaka tuti kufanero. Tiruachi. Tinonya mabati. Gwe mpaka tuti. Wavu bonzita. Imagine that he's too poor. He's broke. He wants me to get 5,000 people. And he wastes their time. He has never stepped in my meeting. Never. He wants to come the first day. Because he's broke. Now, if you can't feed yourself and you're asking the altar to feed you, then you've got it wrong. He didn't say you reap where you sow. He said you reap what you sow. Man of God, you check your substance. You don't put yourself in the front seat. Least a man with greater honor comes. <laughs> and then they put you back where you belong. The spirit world is ranked. God qualifies men. That's why I'm careful how we build. Because the day you build a church on lies, the, way, the day truth comes. Either through a worshiper, <laughs> or through a visiting preacher, that you're gone. And when you build on truth, it doesn't matter how many lies are spoken about you. Or ye tawo. Why? Because he's the rock. Somebody say he's the rock. Somebody say he's the rock. But today men don't even care. A man has a very selfish attitude. He's not asking God, what do you want to do with this saint? No. He's saying, what can I use this saint to do? Such that he stays in my ministry. Then we qualify men who are not. <laughs> because we want to keep. Do you understand what I'm saying? Men, these are bloods. These are bloods. These are bloods. These are bloods. These are lives. You appoint a novice and they're going to be destroyed and they will hit a wall tomorrow and die. Because they're going to be exposed in places they're not supposed to be standing into. Or even carry a delusion of where they really, really belong. The Bible says, prove all men. Men are proved first. And the principles are spoken in the scriptures of how we prove men to become ministers. 
He doesn't just make a man a minister because he has money. Can you say a CDC? <laughs> Can you say a CDC? You watch. Watch. There are consequences. There are consequences. There are con- and I, mean, I fear God help me. me I, you do not understand, but me God help me. me. I pray for myself, by the way. And when I go to God, eh, I go with that attitude of Mokamo Maninyamba. We have gotten it and have not understood it. Eh? Me, I'm humble to be corrected. I'm humble and I can stand on the pulpit and say, This one was wrong. I'm correcting it before God. Why? Because God is that important. He's better than all of us. And what we think is important. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. We don't even have brethren in the gospel anymore. I can talk to this person and I have a problem and they can really stand with me through this. We don't even have brotherly love brotherly, basic brotherly love, basic. We don't have it. Anybody can kill somebody here. Anybody right now. Many Christians are solo. Alina hawe kubanga alioke na ye. Well, oinacho solo kola na kuate mundu na kutulisa. We don't even know what salvation is anymore. We cannot build the church that way. I said we cannot build the church that way. Because God has trusted us with, with too much. Too much. Too much. We have a great responsibility. If you have a personal weakness, put it before God and tell him, Mokama, but don't exalt it. I don't act, it's not there. No, Mokama, Mokama, fix this, it's there, but fix it. I'm yours, fix me. Fix me, he will fix. And yours does fix. Because a broken and contrite spirit, he shall not what? despise. But there are processes you can never use to get God to move. Because you might use them and tomorrow they go back to the point of, this is not how I build my church. You're building yours. He says on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. This is my kingdom, not yours, Grace Lubega. You build it on my terms. You pursue peace with all men where with no man shall see God. You do that because that's how I build the gospel. Are we together? Are we together? Guard your heart. For out of it flow the issues of life. Where have I shared this, Musumba? Mukama yangamba, my sogeza mukama, when to Kurukanti mukama gambi. Have I your get day? Are you get there? The church in Uganda is going to change as people know it. God is raising people in the nation. I have a mutabati tegera. Timukama yachu sise chintu. The church is going to change as people know it. God is separating certain men and women eh, for a very big responsibility. Very big responsibility. But that we are mature. That we will grow up into him in all things. That maturity will reign in the church. That you will speak to a pastor and say, this is a pastor. You will speak to a teacher and say, this is a teacher. You will speak to a prophet and say, this is a prophet because the stability of the spirit is apparent. These days, I saw things I never saw when I was growing up. I've been in congregations where the members are more mature than the set men of the house. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then I started to say, eh, the Lord told me no. It is because I'm changing it. I am changing the church as it is looking. Those days of having 1,000 members, they are going to come to an end. 
Nerukiri la wenu tu wanseri ne wambuka. We are do we me pastor Tony, me, me I'm with you. Abalala wate wate tegera babireke. We are going to pastor this nation. East Africa, Africa, Asia, Europe. We are going to hit the world. It is not by power. Not by might. Not by your networks or education. But by your spirit. You think what does it take God to do? Mukama solo kuflipinga lerencha na okerango limolala. Hallelujah. I have a part in the gospel too. But I have stayed humble before him to tell him God. I have not yet. That's why I tell people I have not yet started funny. People say, when I tell them we have not yet started. Do you know why I'm not I'm saying we are not yet started? I feel there are things they will be for us to really start. At least I'm humble to say Mukama. When I'm ready, the world will know. The world will know. The world will know. There's a reason why I've not started church. Yet we, we do 45,000 people. There's a reason why I've not done it. Not because I don't have the ability to preach every Sunday. But there's a responsibility of being a shepherd. It is deeper than preaching on Sunday. It is deeper than appointments on Wednesday and Tuesday. It is deeper than overnights and laying hands on the sick to be healed. It is deeper than that. Musumba, we are tested in the hardest places. You invest in a man, your all, and then tomorrow he betrays you. And then God tomorrow comes and tells you, what do you deal with that kind of man? Love him even more. But don't be stupid. <laughs> Then you bless him. I don't know that I'm making sense. You, you sit with men who hate you without cause and you still pray for them. One time somebody hurt me. Musumba, I spent 90 days without eating and I could only sleep for like three hours and nobody knew and I lost weight. But every time I went on my knees, to ask God why, I always found myself praying for that person. I prayed for them for 90 days. 90 days I was praying for them. Because the love in me found myself now pitying them instead of asking God to cast them. Because I knew they... I, now I understand when the man said, forgive them for they know not. That's the problem when God starts to show you too much. You carry the burden of men not knowing. And some do things without knowing. And they will never know. Some will never know. But can't it be enough for you that you did your part and you did it well? Why? Because you have a God before whom you stand and you account to every day. He's God. He's still God. Those are the things that make ministers. It's not the lame men walking. It's not the blind eyes opening. It's not the deaf ears. It's not the prophetic words we pass. It's that thing that you sustain in your spirit that still keeps you pure and true to continue walking in love even when you don't have to. Why? Because God is love. Hallelujah. To say, God, here I didn't walk in love, deal with me. Because it's the only way victory is ascertained in this gospel. The world already has too much hate. But when people come in the church and the atmosphere was ministered with falsehood, it doesn't matter how deep a preacher you are, you minister falsehood to their souls. Why? Because you've broke the lines of responsibility. That is why some men don't look like the gospel they preach. Because they ministered falsehood somewhere. They are good worshippers, but God can't open a blind eye in their meeting because they ministered falsehood. They ministered falsehood. They defiled the altar of Jesus Christ and made it their own. And made it their own. The house of God became a transactional place. God help me. God help me. I'm not speaking these things to say I'm better. No. Even me, I'm speaking because I'm an apostle. But at the end of the day, I go back and say, God help me. God help me. Hallelujah. God has to change the way the church thinks. God has to change Africa. 
because our problem is not the mind. We have the most brilliant brains, but our mindsets are very wrong. Sometimes it even comes in what makes us Africans because I've realized black men across the world are the same. Even when you go to America and find those ones who have been born and raised there, they are still the same heart. I don't know what's wrong with our black people. I don't know what's wrong with our black people. I don't know what's wrong with our black people. We don't even have basic excellence. Basic excellence. Basic excellence. We can't even rule a nation. Black men can't even rule a nation. Even just a nation. South Africa is a success because the white man delayed there. If he had gone early and they didn't receive their independence in 1994, they would still be there that they, you saw, some of you saw it on television. And a South African guy gets another black man and kills him. Who does that? How can you kill a fellow black man of the same skin and you kill him? How? They were killing Vaguira immigrants. Now, what do you think? There is no solution. It's in the church. It's not. There is Muslim, but nothing can fix this world. It's the church. And if the church loses its salt, <laughs> its saltiness, the savory, how? If, if, if we lose the savour, what is there to remain? We can't even speak in maturity. Ministers can't even sit and resolve an issue. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go Sometimes, ah ah, we sonywa, we carry sonywa. Okay, they are they have refused to say sorry. You say sorry. They are wrong, yes, but you say sorry and move on. Why? Because God is more important than you winning. He's more important than you winning. We start with men who used to judge us. Never to do never to vuma. One time I sat with the men. They abused me. I told them. I didn't have words for them. And I gave them the words of Gamaliel. And I said, if I'm God, I'll stand. I'm of God. If I'm not of God, I'll not stand. But I forgive you. Because you don't know what you're doing. Fellow Christians, they were removing me out of Makerere and leaving mosques there. They do nothing to reach Muslim students. They are fighting somebody who is preaching Jesus Christ. Fellow people. And many of them God dealt with them. But even when I saw what God did, I felt him come on. I wish they knew. Do you understand what I'm saying? But God has a way to make you happy. The woman had spent many years without combing her hair. Yalwaro mutwe. Somebody, the devil, refuses them to comb their hair for years. I laid hands on her for the first time. She put a comb in her head and combed it. When you see that, you go back to get Noga Mukama. Oh, get it. Oh, get it. For without me, you can do. God will find a way of comforting true men. He will find a way of comforting us. Because the spirit easily vindicates you. He easily vindicates you. When men fought us, I started to see miracles. I can now something settled on me a few days ago. I don't know what's wrong. Now I feel like I want to start raising dead men. I don't know what it is, but some of you saw it on Thursday. I, it's different. I feel it on me. It's, it's, it's not something I've been having usually. It's, it's another thing. That's how a minister's comfort to us. That's how a minister's Abama nyimu kama na abale kayo. Chichite gezanti mutufu. Na chichite gezanti tuwa kumulamua. What did God call us to do? 
It doesn't mean the man is right. No. But what has God called us to do? God, the Bible says that, that I shall bless the people which are not my people. He says, I shall provoke thee to jealousness. Some men are provoked to jealousness. Now they are jealous of cults. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> but it's going to change. Somebody say it's going to change. Tell your neighbor it's going to change. Tell him one more time it's going to change. This is another generation. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray with us. But I, I just wanted us to take a minute and pray for the church. The, that's why I preached today. Pastor Tony showed me a book. How many copies do you have here? 500. He has a book called First, The Fasting of Words. <laughs> I saw through. I read everything. Not every like fully, but the things I read, I really took time to read through them. Um, if you submit it to me, you'll buy it. You know why I tell you so. so we used to buy books to support ministries. <laughs> We are not buying it to support him. Praise the Lord. It's worth it. Praise God. You know when I when I when I stamp on a book, eh? I've stamped on it. There's a book there. It is for five thousand or ten. Now when I tell you you see. But I vouch for this book. If you submit it to me, you're going to buy it. You said what? 10,000? Eh? Musumba. Wagambi mtuwala. Go. Ka. Wago nana. Go ka. Praise God. So, I will ask you to buy a copy and read it in three days. Hallelujah. This is a small book. May I read this kind on in a day? Ah, this is actually a lot. A day is long. I can do this in two, three hours. I'm a very fast reader. Very, very fast reader. So it uh, talks about 56 days of daily confession and faith proclamation. How about that? You just spend 50 days just speaking crazy things. I'm beautiful. Not beautiful, but beautiful. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Greater is he that is in me, that is in the world. The divine life of God is in me. I carry the victorious life of the spirit. Those are the things in here. They are wonderful. Hallelujah. Even me, I have a copy. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. 56 days. Praise the Lord Jesus. So first read it for at least hours. Understand it. You understand? Then you can take your 56 days of speaking. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we're going to buy it, me, Pastor. Not because you asked me, but because I feel we are obligated to support this kind of thing. No, it's not about what you offer. No. A certain man wrote a book of Simanya of a dying what? Simanya of a dying man. Ningamba. Bana in the solar one day, Kabitabo Yaba Sajaba. Go on the Dimalamo Christo. Agamba Kuyan the Dimalamo Christo. Hey. These words are life to them that find them. Hallelujah. So 10,000 shillings are owned. How many of you are going to buy tonight? Put up your hands. I want to see your hands. Put up. If you're going to buy tonight. Cancel. Can't turn your face. Don't worry. I won't say your names. I'll just be surprised. If you're going to buy it, let me first. Don't worry. I'm not forcing you. Eh? But there's something I need to see. I need to. I need to message it dako mbabuze mwanikenda baba abagendo kula if you're gonna buy put up your hands put up and I see put up and I see put, are you submitted to me put up and I see I want to first put up mwanikenda be wanji are you submitted to me wanji eh mumponi hallelujah I was going to be scared. 
So let's buy copies. But I want us to take a minute and just pray for the body of Christ. Then after that, I feel led that we speak a very prophetic word on this ministry. Very praise the word. If you're a pastor and you're visited from another ministry, bless this one. God will bless yours. Hallelujah. Can you take a minute and just talk to God about the church and yourself? Mogambe and Zemokamba and Zemindibu went. Mogambe Mokamba and Zemindibu went.
you now raise the international gospel embassy to God and tell him God bless this ministry Father we bless this ministry we bless the set man of the house and his wife the hands that began this shall see it to accomplishment God we bless their vision we bless the works of their hands. We bless the sons and daughters that you'll bless under them. And we decree and declare that their sons and daughters shall not be snatched from under them. You'll increase them, God. You'll establish and multiply them. God, you're going to build this ministry. It's going to be a force in this part of the world. It is possible with you, God. It's your Holy Spirit that does all these things. God, you can do it. Work in the ministers. Work in the hearts of men who come here to feed from this altar, to drink from this fountain, to eat from this pasture. Father, we thank you, God, because you are aligning them to purpose and course that the wicked and unreasonable are far away from them in the name of Jesus. God, you multiply them. You do great things in their lives. We bless you because they are moving. They are moving. They are moving Father. They are expanding. They are multiplying. Victory is theirs. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. Father, I honor you. Father, I glorify your holy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want you to give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. Thank you, Lord. So, those of us who are going to buy them copies, buy them copies today. Those of you who didn't come with money and are hoping to buy later, put up your hands and I see them too. If you're saying, I want to buy later, of course, I didn't come with money, but I want to buy later. Put up and I see your hands. Good. Uh, you give us a couple of copies. Man of God will go with them. I trust my people. <laughs> the person who you'll give them to. So, how many of you, who is going to volunteer to carry those copies? I need a volunteer. Stand up. Okay, both of you stand up. Because you both stood up. Stand up. I'm going to pray for you. And then you get married this coming year. In the name of Jesus. How can you how how can you volunteer to carry the books? Okay. This is Prosy. Put up your hands. This is Julie. Right? You're gonna see them. See their faces very well. Praise God. I'll also sell some at the sales table in Fanero. Musumba. Pastor, allow us to carry some even on one of those Thursdays to sell on our table. They will buy. We shall sell copies. Praise the Lord. Because I believe in what I've read. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Lastly, Pastor, thank you for allowing me to come and minister in your church. Who am I? <laughs> thank you for allowing me to come. I could never have been in any place. I was supposed to be in Pastor Ram's church this evening. And you remember I was telling you, let me do two days. Then you said, no, three. Then I told Pastor Ram, I said, Pastor Ram, Musumba, I made the call. Pastor Ram Nangamba, I, I love the way he wrote it. He said, Muse, we are the same spirit. Let's go to the church and you minister. And he came also. So that man, make him your friend. He's not far from here. Chirinya Joka is there. Hallelujah. Yagambia Amusumba. Maridi Yet Bambi he has waited for like three weeks, three months. Mukama chikubali le msajiyako. Mukama yelo. Akwechi moto kechi nene. Akwechi masi dische emero ni na chen na chen kula ba mumu muoyo. I don't just speak by the way. He knows. Akwechi moto kechi nda ba chinene. Rero mukama ay 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 ay. Somebody thank God. We muna chira ba. Mujia kujukiranti ya wayo meeting Ya sadaka meeting <laughs> Hallelujah God bless you Clap for me as I leave <laughs> I'm joking 